watching a nation busily engaged in heaping up its own funeral pyre. British Conservative politician Enoch Powell. In 1968, he delivered a speech to a Birmingham branch of the Conservative Party, which was later dubbed the Rivers of Blood speech. In it, Powell quoted Virgil's poem, The Aeneid, in which Virgil, envisaging a war, pictured the river Tiber foaming with much blood. Powell's foreboding was based on his observation that Britons were starting to feel like strangers in their own land. A week or two ago, I fell into conversation with a constituent, a middle-aged, quite ordinary working man employed in one of our nationalised industries. After a sentence or two about the weather, he suddenly said, if I had the money to go, I wouldn't stay in this country. I made some deprecatory reply to the effect that even this government wouldn't last forever, but he took no notice and continued. I have three children, all of them been through grammar school and two of them married now with family. I shan't be satisfied till I've seen them settled overseas. In this country, in 15 or 20 years time, the black man will have the whip hand over the white man. I can already hear the chorus of execration. How dare I say such a horrible thing? How dare I stir up trouble and inflame feelings by repeating such a conversation? The answer is that I do not have the right not to do so. Here is a decent, ordinary fellow Englishman who in broad daylight in my own town says to me, his member of parliament, that his country will not be worth living in for his children. I simply do not have the right to shrug my shoulders and think about something else. What he is saying, thousands and hundreds of thousands are saying and thinking. Not throughout Great Britain perhaps, but in the areas that are already undergoing the total transformation to which there is no parallel in a thousand years of English history. Those whom the gods wish to destroy, they first make mad. We must be mad, literally mad, as a nation, to be permitting the annual inflow of some 50,000 dependents, who are, for the most part, the material of the future growth of the immigrant descended population like watching a nation busily engaged in heaping up its own funeral pyre. There are among the Commonwealth immigrants who have come to live here in the last 15 years or so, many thousands whose wish and purpose is to be integrated and whose every thought and endeavour is bent in that direction. But to imagine that such a thing enters the heads of a great and growing majority of immigrants and their descendants is a ludicrous misconception and a dangerous one to boot. We're on the verge here of a change. Hitherto, it has been force of circumstance and of background, which has rendered the very idea of integration inaccessible to the to greater part of the immigrant uh, population, that they never conceived memorial. or intended such a thing, and that their numbers and physical concentration meant the pressures towards integration, which normally bear upon any small minority, did not operate. Now we are seeing the growth of positive forces acting against integration, of vested interests in the preservation and sharpening of racial and religious differences, with a view to the exercise of actual domination. First over fellow immigrants, and then over the rest of the population. Have your flags, just not on the barriers, that's it. And yet when they march down with hundreds of Palestinian flags, you won't say a word. As I look ahead, I am filled with foreboding, like the Roman. I seem to see the river Tiber foaming with much blood. If Powell was alive today, he'd say, I told you so.